I see the north when the summer pines. Who are the kids? The ones with the As soon as I open my eyes, we're lyrical sorcerers from all over Cascadia. I knew it's going down tonight. Got all like our homies together. Got Ag Gagi, Elemental, Storm Frost, Yahweh, Soul Disciple. Rhyme wave, but this ain't even all of us. This is just all of us that made it to Mexico and had the passport things worked out. So, you know, we're doing our big show here on Sunday. We got one tomorrow night. You know, excited to throw it down with the homies. So, how did this group come together? What brought you all together? So, say, I was like back in like 2019, 2020, sometime like that. Uh, Elias Clay and Illuminati Congo and uh, Mike, Mike Word. And a couple other artists came from different areas and on their all, all Rise Together tour. And they came to Portland and we did a show called the Cosmic Hip Hop Showcase. And that's the first time that me and Rhyme Wave and also Chiroglyph, who unfortunately couldn't make it here, uh, all did like a show at the same time in the same space. And uh, we started coming together with this idea to kind of do like a little mixtape or a little EP, like with a bunch of collaboration tracks from other, you know, MCs in the streets of Portland and stuff. And then shortly after that, I ended up going down to Jackalope Festival. And that's actually where I met Torin and Yahweh. And, uh, you know, I remember meeting Torin, and the first time I ever seen this kid, he come up with me and Kenny were making, uh, like, some vegan, like, potato dishes and serving up people food, like, rainbow style by the bus. And this kid comes up to us freestyling about the potatoes we're cooking and shit. And I was like, who is this <laughs> 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 Yeah, but uh, but then like when I told him about the idea for the EP and stuff, and we were, at the time we were calling it like the Snake Charmer EP because we had these like kind of Snake Charmerish instrumentals we were fucking around with, and uh, you know that ended up turning into a full LP and then eventually a full double LP, which we're calling the Axis of Mythic Imagination, right? It's about pulling things from the dream world into this reality via the axis uh, being guided by our, our totems and our spirit animals. Um, I've learned about this stuff in a Dream al Alchemy book, and it really inspired me and a lot of the music that's in this. Um, you know, we already got our first music video out, we got our website out, we got like links and ex video examples from every single artist in the Meet the MC section of our website. Um, we're pretty much doing everything ourselves, and like, really, with this team collaboration, it's like we're all promoting each other and the group at the same time with everything that we're doing, right? And then uh, we also have like different skills and styles and talents and approaches. So not only is the music way more versatile overall, but we're also like getting a lot more done. I mean, like there's no way I could have been like finishing all the stuff in the mastering studio for part one of our Axis release and, and getting all my show beats ready and stuff. And also like be, you know, getting the QR codes ready for the posters, for the donations and stuff. And thank God Rhyme Wave came through. He did like the other half of that equation. He was doing like the QR code posters and stuff and was helping with, you know, throwing stuff through Ozone to get the, the beats ready uh, for, for the shows that we're doing down here. Um, that's just like one small example. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, you know, as time went on, we met, you know, we met other people. You know, I've known, I've known Squirrel forever. He goes by Odd Goggy now or AKA Myth. Um, you know, so we've been doing hip hop since even back in Virginia, really, like years and years. That was and then back in like 2011. Yeah, that was a long time ago when we were fucking around with that shit at first. And then uh, and Soul Disciple, I met you recently, and I where was it? Elm in the Range? Is that where we met? I man, I think we I, I saw you and mm -hmm. uh, Casey play at where was it? The Good Foot, okay. right? You guys. Did oh, I remember that one. That yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, we we dapped. That was like about it. But okay, we, for but sure. But then we connected at Omen the Range. Yeah, that's, I remember. That's where I met like Torin, mm. and uh, yeah, that was so fun. Casey Casey's the one who really like helped us all, you know, get into that festival, and he was like mm -hmm. the first one promoting it, and because we all just like fell in alignment, and it's really dope to be a part of such a dope crew with so much talent, like super inspiring. And I feel a big wave. You know, like with everybody's, with everybody's like, yeah, I feel a bit, I feel a big rhyme way. I'm feeling that rhyme way. Yeah. I remember I came, I came to a certain point too, and I, things were getting crazy. And it was like really building energy and more people were coming in. And I remember coming to Rhyme Wave and I was like, dude, like, I really need someone to help me kind of like quarterback this thing. It can't be just me like doing all the organization and stuff on all these different facets. He's like, I got you. And he's been exactly that this the whole time. I really appreciate you, brother. I couldn't have done any of this without you, man. For sure, man. You know? Dude, just to like, yeah, give my perspective on the whole situation. This is all making me feel amazing because like, yeah, Oman the Range was such a crazy festival. 
And uh, that was our first performance officially as Ken and Merlin. And we just threw it together with the people that were available. I mean, there's so many MCs in this group. What is it, like 15? Yeah, there's like some, some like 15. More. A lot of people I have to go count them. Like count them. But we're, we're kind of finding our core, you know, mm -hmm. our uh, true group of people yeah. that are going to show up for shows. And like, yeah. I think that will constantly be shifting and evolving. And it's just crazy to me how it's already shifted and evolved so much. Because like when I first signed up i was like yeah sure i'll be a part of this mixtape like yeah. you know it was actually kind of a fun exercise in the beginning uh -huh. just to like do some quick writing of verses basically just like i'm just gonna sit down and write a quick verse which usually when i do my own solo shit i'm just like spending so long on each song you know you spend fucking days on a song but with the kin shit it just became like a way to just like sit down and get a verse out sit down and get a verse mm -hmm. out and then seeing these songs come together where like i just throw 16 a song that took me an hour and it turns into this fucking epic song like, that yeah. makes you want to do more of that shit. You know, so like, yeah. in the beginning I was like, oh yeah, mixtape, cool, whatever. And then as I saw these songs come together and like other people join up, I'm just like, whoa, like this is actually turning into something. And mm -hmm. like we've got some fucking tracks and hopefully we can figure out a way to get everyone to play shows together. But yeah, I've been making music pretty much just by myself up until the last couple of years and you know a lifetime of making music pretty much all solo. So this is super special. Yeah. Be a part of uh, a true, a true collaboration. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, and then uh, we started something called we called Studio Days at one point, right? Yep. And basically I was just like, look, we need to put tracks together in the studio, just pass around a notebook and trade bars, right? And the idea was that the first one we did was, for the first food, uh, studio, it was bo the Bobby fucking White track, which yeah. is a fucking hilarious track. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, for that one, it's like the standard, like four bars, pass it, four bars, pass it, the next person record, right, record, right, right? Yeah. But then when we did Northwest Summertime for the second one, I was like, we need to switch it up and just have like different amounts of different bars in different places and not make it so structured like that. And oh my God, did that song turn out good, man. I cannot wait for the world to hear that one. It is a special one. We're definitely doing a music video for that, for sure. Oh man. Yeah. We're gonna cruise in the 69. Cruise in the 69. <laughs> it's the Northwest Summertime. That's right. That's a groove. So does Kim and Merlin have a uh, mission statement or a driving purpose, and what would that be? Ooh, God damn. Could have told us that one before the interview. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, man. Well, we all want to discombobulate the system. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, if, if I can answer that one. <laughs> that's a good one. You know, I, I think that we all have our own individual, unique um, messages that we're trying to put out through our music. And I think that coming together, I think one of our main messages is that uh, we can make changes in the world around us if we come together and work as a community. It's, if we work as a family, then we can get anything done. Yeah. And I think that's one of our uh -huh. main messages. And that's why we true kin. You know what I mean? <laughs> the um, main, one of the things that I noticed is just like the energy. Like the energy that everybody's coming from is like really dope, really authentic. And uh, super inspiring. So. Yeah. And notice every single member wants to save the earth and yeah. to connect. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Positive another, yeah. messages, you know, to instill this, especially in the youth. You know, I got nieces and nephews. Brother got a niece here, and we're trying to. This is the future. You know, hip hop mm -hmm. is such a wild gener generational thing that you could pass on. You could pass on these messages. So I know everyone on this table is rapping about stuff that my nieces and nephews could actually listen to, which is dope, and it's still cool, and I can rock yeah. with it, and it's, it's nice to find that wizardry, those sorcerers, yeah, those spells right. of positivity, you know, all instead all of all using those negative spells. Everything spells messages. because it's words and spelling, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just the way it is. We're just reinforcing that in a more real way to really mm. ground our intentions and manifest that reality. That's why we're calling it the Axis mm. of Mythic Imagination, because we can imagine our reality into existence. You know what I mean? But as far as a point about our mission statements, you know, like you were saying, in my interview too, I said earlier today, uh, synergism between guy and humanity, inspiring that in people and like prioritizing that as a thing that, you know, we should have at the forefront of our minds when we're going through our lives on a daily basis. But most people don't. Most people are too conditioned. We also have to focus on deprogramming these people through our music. You know what I mean? And uh, more than that, and uh, I think it was Rhyme Wave yesterday, we and him were having a conversation about like all the different like things that people are talking about, how we're all pointing like these different messages. And I was like, yeah, but I think the one message that we're all kind of saying collectively is just exposing truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if yeah. to put it simply. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you guys have gone through a lot since the time that this first uh, this collaboration first started to, uh, to come together. So how has it evolved? You spoke a little bit about this, but how has it evolved really from the time that it started to now? What's like the big broad strokes? What does it look like when it started? What does it look like now? We're in fucking Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. Yo, yo, me and Scroll were talking just the other day about how we were, how, how we were like, not that long ago, we were just street rats in Virginia, in Northern Virginia, didn't have shit. It's like, look at all this abundance we have around us now, and all this stuff we're creating and manifesting, like, just, we moved 3,000 miles across the country, and now we're like, probably, what, another 3,000 miles south of Mexico, you know, where are we going next? You know, showing our art to people all around the world, you know, mm-hmm. showing love to one another, creating communities all across the world, networking, not just being these little slugs on the sidewalk, you know, we're, we're actually, <laughs> we actually have impact in our actions versus just these meaningless lives, and we, we, we have these stories that we're living, and these journeys that we're going on, and helping people go on their own journeys and helping each other through our own journeys and it's 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 come from nothing to this amazing universe that we're living in Mm -hmm. all the way from the falls of cascadia to the temples of tulum we're here to bring you the boom (laughs) (laughs) so all of you have your unique styles and your unique origins of how you got involved in music and uh, even the motives that brought you to that point. But how does your individual creative processes differ from the collaborative creations that you guys do together? Mm. Well, let's, we might have to pass that one around the table to figure out what everyone's individual creative process is to see that, you know. I think we're still, right. we're still discovering each other's processes, totally. yeah. you know? Yeah, totally. yeah, that's true. And like, yeah, I think, I think the beauty of, of this vision is like, the fact that we're all so committed to our own art, mm-hmm. you know, and that we all want each other to win. And, uh, yeah, it's just like, in, we've been investing in ourselves for so long, you know, all of us, and the fact that, like, we're kind of meeting together in this kind of, like, this place of, like, oh, wait, like, we're way more powerful when we come together, mm-hmm. when we mm-hmm. bring the visions together, you know, and people, people recognize that, and it's mm-hmm. dope. And the reality is, is I don't know of... A collect like a conscious hip hop collective. Right. I've never heard of that shit. There's no like. Rhyme you know, stars? Maybe. I, I don't know. There weren't that many big groups though. I mean, yeah. Living Legends is the one that comes to mind for me. Or like you know hieroglyphics or. Yeah, but like yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like yeah. Rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Atmosphere's label wasn't the Rhyme Stairs. Right? Rolling Six called? Deep yeah, though. It's just one like like yeah, yeah. Rhyme, Rhyme Stairs is an entire label. It's yeah, not it's a, a yeah. group. Oh yeah. So, like, yeah. We're a group, not. Ken and Merlin isn't a, a label, you know, we're, that's, we're that's, all that's cell phone working soul. together, that's yeah, you know, the cell phone and souls is the co- whole collective, but in Ken and Merlin, that's us, you know, versus like Rhyme Sayers, like, that's, Rhyme Sayers controls each of the individual artists, mm. you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. so like, there, there really aren't that mm. many large collectives. Yeah, and like the, I feel like a lot of things like this, people start stuff like, you know, similar to this kind of thing, and they want it to be their thing, you know, even though it's like a collaboration. I've never had that mindset. From the very beginning, I've been clear with everyone, like, when when you come into this, like, this is all of ours. That's why I was talking about the round table earlier in King Arthur, because it's like, this is literally, like, we all have equal part in this, we all be equal say in this, what we're doing. That's why I'm being so picky about asking all the artists about all the mixes and the little details, what do we need to, like, alter that you're not happy with, you know, so it's all, like, congruent, everyone's satisfied. Um, You know, this isn't my thing, this is our thing. You know what I mean? That's all I gotta say about it. Moving on. Sorry. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So I know that I heard a lot of y'all's music, um, and I know that I've heard a lot of wild and funny things. So what's the wildest and funniest, more funniest thing, and funniest music, wildest music you've ever produced, and how was it received by the people who heard it? <laughs> When you say wildly crazy, I assume you mean like radical and conspiratorial. <laughs> or well, maybe like you are what you eat and I'm not laid. Cashing out on cash. I thought that V chain shit was pretty funny. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was, that's definitely mine. That was, um, that's uh, that's uh, mine. Um, that is <laughs> out there. We really went all the way with that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I've had some wild shit that, you know, comes in my mind all the time when I'm, like, uh, thinking about bars, you know. Sometimes I have to, like, reel it in a little bit, you know, especially as, like, a conscious rapper or whatever the fuck that is. It's, like, I want to make sure that I'm, like, finding a good balance of, like, you know, because I want my words to be positive. I want it to be, like, influencing people in a positive way, you know. But my mind works in a, a lot of times in a weird way, you know. I even have one, the one song called, like, Tea Thoughts based off of, like, a pun of, like, you know, like, T-H-O-T. You know, and when I thought of this, I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. That's crazy, you know. But part of, like, my art experience is, like, allowing myself to express myself in ways that, you know, sometimes are, like, a little weird or, like, pushing boundaries in some ways, you know what I'm saying? And just, like, giving myself the permission to, like, share that part of myself, you know, and not be scared of, like, putting it out there, you know? Mm. Yeah. You got to be a kid, man. That's yeah, the, yeah, like, totally. The reality is when we're playing music, we're playing. So, mm. like, keeping that spirit, I think, is, like, 100% really important. Mm-hmm. So I know that there's a lot of men in this group. Um, do you guys have any ladies in the group or oh, intentionally okay. include some women? But yeah, we, we uh, Emily Ra is part of what we're doing. Uh, we actually Shout do out. want more feminine influence in our group for sure. We also have the homegirl Elena uh, throw down on a couple of tracks doing some singing vocals and stuff. That's actually something we're really lacking is a consistent singer to be in the group, so we'll see what happens in the future with that. Uh, I had one person I thought it was going to be at a certain point, but they kind of were going through something and dropped out and that's kind of how it went for, with a lot of different singers that we tried out throughout time. Um, but we, we do want more female actual rappers too, though. And like, I know they're around, it's just, they're, it, it, from, it, from what I've seen, at least in our area, there's not as many of them like, that uh, I interact with. I've seen a couple recently, uh, who was that chick, Golden Goddess? She was like rapping and doing yeah. a DJ thing, and right? And Mark like, Huh? Yeah. Mark, oh, she's, she's dope. Yeah, yeah. They're out, she's they're dope. Out there. Oh, Jada them. Muse from up in Northern Washington. Oh, my God. oh Jada's a spitter. I'm God, still, I'm so her. She's a real deal. Jeez. Jada's dope. Good Lord. That, you know, we, so to answer your question, yes, we want more of that. And we do have one person that's a female in the group at the moment. Um, Emily Ra. Yeah. Emily she's Ra. holding it down. Mothership Cypher, too. The the day, man. She, she is, she is, shit, man. Yeah, she's killing yeah, Hip hop medicine down there in Dub Moses. Watch out. <laughs> I personally, I'd like to see Lily Fangs join your group. Oh, Lily Fangs. We would love to see like Next anyone level. who wants to be a part of the group join the group. You know, as long as they vibe with what we're doing and they are putting out shit that's in their truth. You know, real dope music. Like it's basically just like whoever wants to be involved. So it's who we connect asked, with. We've asked you know what I mean? so many people like, hey, come to the sessions, get on this track, and the people that are currently in the Kin of Merlin are really the people who have stepped up to the challenge. Um, and that offer has been put out to, you know, men and women, but we do need to get some more ladies in the group. But really, it's like, we don't have a limit for how many people could be in the group. Like, you know, this album's gonna have 20 MCs on it, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it might be on only one track, you know, like, and, and we'll see, yeah, we'll see where it goes. But like, yes, if you're, in, if you're into uh, what we're doing, like, let's get, on, let's get you on a track, you know, like, I, I think it's up. Oh, it's it's we're not. We're gonna get part one of this album out. We're not gonna be able to drop part two before we drop the Morelli EP we made here this week. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's gonna be like part one, then no time, time to wait. Joint, right? and it's like <laughs> then part two later. Good lord! And then we got like two more solo albums coming out for me and him after that too. You guys are about to do a double release. Uh, Nature's Apprentice is another member of our group too. Him and Ron Wave are doing a double release that you're performing at that one too, right? At Moe's next month. Oh, yeah. yeah. Early next month. We're basically on tour right now. I mean, no. as soon as I get back, it's like I have to do like three more shows all in a row. Do, 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 do. You know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been fun, actually. It's been uh, quite necessary, too, for everything that's happened in the past, like, six months. So, you know. So I'd like to go around and just hear yeah. what each of you is uh, seeking from this collaboration. What individually you find yourself here for. Ooh-wee. Oh shit! <laughs> God damn! Uh, <laughs> <a> squirrel. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you want from us? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I am looking for. Um, no, you know, for myself, I see all the other members as inspiration in various ways. And I, I see all the other members as someone that I can learn from and someone that can help me uh, with progressing the way that I create and put out my music, uh, the way that I interact with crowds, 
the way that I at, interact with fans one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the way that I interact with other artists. There's so many things that I can learn from each other individual that, you know, being part of this, this collective, part of this collaboration, allows me to grow infinitely. And at the same time, I know that there are things that I can bring to the table and I am 100% ready and willing to share and teach anything that anyone wants to learn from myself. So, you know, as I was saying before, you know, it's, it's all about being able to come together and to work as a community, to work as a family, to grow and accomplish whatever we are trying to work towards. So that, that's what I personally see uh, becoming part of this as myself. Yeah, and I mean, like, for me, I've never, like, been seeking fame. You know, I actually quite like my privacy, but um, I, would, I would like to recognize once that recognition is earned, right? Um, but, like, as far as the group itself, like, I just want to see everyone succeed and let's do that together and make really dope fucking music, regardless of who fucking, or who is or isn't into it. You know what I mean? Because with what we're making, I know people are into it. You know, it's just like, we, we have kind of a, a niche genre these days, you know, and we're basically trying to resurrect the real essence of hip-hop, which is like what Professor Griff founded as the, uh, the acronym that he created for hip-hop from Public Enemy was uh, Higher Infinite Power Healing Our People, mm -hmm. right? So, I don't know, that's what it's about for me personally, and, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty selfless person for the most part, I feel like, or at least I like to think I am. Um, so, you know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, and I see things that need to happen, and I, need to, and I like know, hey, this person's right to do this. You know, this person's right to do that. And it's like, this person's good for for this. I'm not just saying, this has to be me. This has to be me. No, 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 that's the wrong move. Sometimes it is me, you know, but a lot of times it's not. And that's, I don't know, that's just why I enjoy the collective vibe. We're going to get a lot done, you know what I mean? We already have. I mean, look at all this shit that we're doing, dude. It's crazy. Think about where we'll be in a year. Like, ooh, Mexico tour next time. Mm-hmm. So that's my answer for that one. Hell yeah. yeah. So I'm really, really trying to put the Northwest on the world map, y'all. Mm, and the too. Northwest has not been really known, recognized, respected for hip hop, and even the ones who make it out, like Macklemore, the world just clowns on them. And I'm like, we need some real spitters. So we're just collecting all the wizards together. And I've been, I'm from Seattle, and they've been all living in Portland, so when I pass through, my man Sass lets me crash on his couch like a true brother, sliding through at 1 a.m., we're in the booth, and to have like a home base of dope MCs in Portland, it's just like the biggest dream to me ever. Casey's hitting me up all the time, Ryan was like, yo, you want to play a show, you want to play a show, I'm just driving down, playing shows, and it's so dope, because Seattle hasn't been too connected to Portland, these are newer cities, they're not as old as New York, and they're not as big and thickly developed, they're smaller cities. And then Seattle hasn't been connected to Vancouver, Canada. And not, Portland's not connected to Eugene and Ashland. So the Northwest, there's tons of small cities. It's not like a big metropolis like L.A., like 3 million. It's like, I mean, we, we have 3 million spread through the Northwest cities. So I'm trying to bridge this gap. And the Ken of Merlin is like the lighthouse beacon of Portland just coming out like, come, we got the studios, we got the beat, we got the rappers, we're booking shows. I'm like, damn, they got it popping. Mothership Cypher every month at the Haven. The hip-hop yes, community right. needs a hub. And in Vancouver, there's Icon Hip Hop, and uh, my homie Ghetto Fab, he's hosting Cyphers every Tuesday. And for us to build a hip hop community is what needs to happen, or else it's not going to happen because we are the community that people are. So if there's not Cyphers, there's not shows, there's not studios, and it all fills us away. So Ken and Merlin, the collective empowers us to be a pyramid with like a giant force, because mm -hmm. by ourselves we're so weak, you know, mm -hmm. can only do so much. And but together we're just like oh, 20 song album, let's make another hit, shoot the video. It's so dope to have a team that knows all the skills together. Yeah, we're like Metatron Cube coming together. <laughs> it's so dope. And so yeah, Ken and Merlin, I just want to keep making dope music. And as I keep traveling the world, because I travel a lot, I want to be like, yo, check out these Portland rappers and have songs to show for it. Multiples, like he'll check out all these tunes and to actually have proof of it by recording these songs, which we need homies that are down to record, thank you, and mix it up, yeah, make the beats, good. and it's like, it takes a team, I don't make beats or record, so when the homies make beats, it's like, let's do this, stop shooting the video, we got the camera, so we get to go. That's right. When the team comes together, the dream comes together. And that's what the Ken and Merlin's out about, y'all. Yeah. Ooh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teamwork yeah. makes the dream work. That's a shit, right? Uh, yeah.
Yeah, well put. You know, I guess, um, yeah, me coming to this group, you know, I really, part of my intention with hip hop music and why I make music, you know, is just to like, uh, have like a positive influence. I think music is like super, super influential to like everybody, you know, kids, like adults, everybody, especially hip hop music. I think it's the most influential genre that's, that's out, you know, and, and I think that, you know, a lot of people, myself included, are like influenced in like kind of like negative ways by like certain music, you know, and there's a lot of messages that are not necessarily like uh, beneficial to the community, you know, or like um, a lot of times it promotes like misogyny or like, uh, like violence and, and certain things, which is like, there's there's a space for that too, you know, because I feel like that's very real. That's a part of like a lot of like rappers, like uh, like life, you know what I'm saying? But also I want to, with hip hop, promote something that's like healthy for like the people that I know, the people that I love and care about, you know, the people in my community, like uh, myself as well, you know, to listen and bump just like stuff that's like positive and influential, but also that slaps and like that has like grit and that's like fire, you know, and and I feel like in, in meeting all of you, you know, we have like a similar intention and in just like creating like a, like powerful magic spells that like bring about like positivity and like health and, and wealth, you know, and and so yeah, my part of my intention in like joining with this group is just to join forces and to be more powerful in that, you know, because I do believe we are more powerful together, you know. Like hip hop makes it, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then, and then it's true. Like there are certain skills, you know, like you know, with you with the videography, you're crazy with that shit. And there's certain skills that everybody has that it's like, I know as we come together, it just it just makes this yeah this huge, epic thing, you know. So it's cool to be a part of that and and kind of just like. Any anything that's gonna help me with this mission to affect positive change for my people and my community, I'm like all about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me, uh music for me has always been a solo thing. It's always been like my, you know, quickest form of therapy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that. And Real uh rough. <laughs> also, also, just like yeah. connecting, connecting to myself, connecting to my higher self, you know, yeah. connecting to, yeah. um, you know, that which keeps me going on a day-to-day -day basis, and I don't know, like it's, it's just a fucking dream come true to be here in this chair, surrounded with all of you, straight up. Mm -hmm. Like, I've, you know, like I think <clears throat> community is such a huge aspect of what it takes to lead a fulfilling life, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I just like, I'm here for the inspiration, you know, just like seeing all of you do your your thing, like, makes me want to keep doing my thing that much more, I'm always going to do my thing, you right. know, but like, having that, that collective, like, inertia when you guys are making a beat, like, and making a dope song, I'm like, ooh, like, I gotta, like, I gotta get going, like, I gotta get, get some shit going, and so it's just like, that kind of you know, mm -hmm. that kind of swirling vortex of goodness mm -hmm. going all the way up. Let's yeah. get it. Yeah. Oh, like, good no, fucking man. answer, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost wanted to just, like, rip, rip on everything everyone just said because I, I definitely resonate with all that. Ditto. And, uh, yeah, for me, like, I noticed very similar things when I started connecting with other like-minded people in the music scene, like, I want, I was more motivated to, like, make more music, make better music, like, you want to impress your friends, you know, you're like, yo, check out this dope shit I just made, check out this new beat, check out this song, and for so long, I would just make something, and I would never bust it out, you know, I'd maybe share it, like, at a party or something with my close friends, but, like, having people that you can go to to just bounce shit off of and build with, uh, is so powerful, and, like, that's definitely something that attracts me to Kenna Merlin, and yeah, on a very personal level, I think that's kind of where I'm at with it, is just like really trying to embrace the spirit of collaboration when I typically, you know, have been more self-focused with the music and um, just see where it goes and just have fun with it, you know? And like, I, I think, too, I, there's a lot of people that I would like to make a song with, but, you know, maybe I, I don't see potential for a, a, like a cohesive, solid group. And, like, everyone that's a part of Kim and Merlin, I feel like I would like to hang out with, you know, and kick it with, and, like, go to Mexico with, you know. And, like, <laughs> I think even if the whole group was here, we would all, you know, be having a great time together. And, like, being able to find that, it's like, why not? You know, like, you got to go with it. You meet a bunch of, like, like-minded people. But going more into, like, what Torn was saying about, you know, bringing, 
you know, a little recognition to the Pacific Northwest in terms of the hip hop and stuff like that. And also like, you know, what Yala was saying in terms of like delivering a positive message with the music. A lot of my music is really fucking weird and like I'm trying to make it catchier and I'm trying to make it like slap harder and I'm trying to fucking, you know, make songs that people would just bump and listen to. Um, but there's so much fucking catchy shit coming out of this group and in this group and what we can create together and the beats that a lot of the beats elemental uh, supplied um, found from different producers and it's a whole different sound for me it's like it's really taken what I've been making in a completely different direction I'm just so excited to to have that inspiration you know on the table now um, and to be able to share it, you know, so it's like, it's, it's been super fun for me, seeing everyone else have fun has, has kept me going with it, and now I'm just, yeah, super stoked for the future to see where it all goes, and, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm out to you tomorrow, <laughs> Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. That was great. Um, we talked about where, the origins of this group came from. We talked about the motives that each of you have. So where do you see this group going, like, let's say five years in the future? Where do you see this group in five years? I think I think that we're going to be playing big crowds. Yeah. Just Honestly, I don't play. see, I feel like that's inevitable. Yeah. It, 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 five years at the most. Yeah. You know, I mean, shit, we should already be playing a pretty big crowd on Sundays. Yeah, true. I mean, Sorry, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. We're in venue. Mexico playing yeah, like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> But no, but it's hard to say. Yeah, it's hard to say good. exactly. And I don't like to, like, I like to ground intentions like that, but I also don't like to like, jinx it. But, you know, I, I feel like all of us are going to be successful as a group and individually as musicians and producers of all kinds, like, in five years, easily, mm-hmm. easily. All we got to do is just stick together, remember who our true kin are, you know what I mean? Protect each other. Don't like, you know, stay away from the riffraff. Keep our brothers away from the riffraff. And just keep doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And stay on our path because it's been working. And it's still working. I don't see why it would stop working. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I think it's as yeah. simple as that. I'm seeing the double XL you know? cover, you know. Yeah. Yachts. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm talking <laughs> about, my <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think I'm just gonna keep the same car, right? right. <laughs> going to put some candy on it, you know? <laughs> and we're still gonna be bumping Northwest Summertime. Cruising the 69. <laughs> we ain't selling out, we're keeping the same stuff, just putting it right back in the studio, getting a little better lens, little camera. Where's the next trip? Apparently there's a pebble mine in Alaska that they put this mine that's apparently worth $64 billion, it's gonna kill all the salmon and the grizzly bear. That's fucked up. So we gotta get up there, shoot a music video that's hot to let the people know how fucked up this is, so hopefully the rich people will stop the other rich mm-hmm. people from taking down the pebble mine. We gotta totally. take down the dams and bring the salmon back. Totally. Well, if I got money, we about to give the land back, y'all. Yeah, give us that power. See what we do. Well, that, five years, we five right. years we should at least knock down one dam. Yep. Give right. at least... 50 save acres the back. Is, save, save the, the old flat. flat. That yeah. needs to happen this year. You feel me? I'm performing this shit tomorrow. By the way, Doug Ducey, governor of Arizona, we got a song for you, brother. He's trying to destroy the Oak Flat right now. Sacred Apache ceremonial land on top of a mountain. We're talking food forest that they've lived in for thousands of years. White people look like me. Conquistadors came in, fucked everything up, took them out, moved them to a reservation in the middle of the desert. Imagine getting taken from your home in the lush forest, in the creeks, in the riverbeds full of manzanita, choya, nopales, and oaks. An oak forest on top of the mountain in the middle of the desert in Arizona. You're living there with your families, and then some people just come in and take you out and put you in the middle of the desert and make you on the res. That's what happens to the natives there, and it's so fucked up. I've seen the Apache sunrise ceremony with my own eyes there. Hundreds of Apache singing to the skies with a 30 foot tall fire and crow dancers. They drive hours just to have ceremony because that's their ceremonial land. They're not going to do it in the desert. So they got to leave their home, drive hours just to have ceremony, and then drive back when that's their home. And right now, Doug Ducey's trying to destroy it. Why is it so sacred? It's the largest copper deposit in North America under this mountain. You feel it radiating from the ground because all desert, and then the mountains just shoot up, and in four miles, you're on top of this sacred mountain oasis. And that's where the Apache people live. So they got forcefully removed. Now they're trying to dig a two-mile hole crater that's going to put so much toxins into the rivers and all the towns all the way down to Phoenix 
which Phoenix drinking water is already filled with arsenic to incredibly toxic amounts. You can Google it right now on any website. Don't drink Phoenix tap water. Why? Because all the copper mines. And they want to do another one. So fuck you, Doug Ducey, and all these rich ass governors, senators, and people that are okay with us destroying the land for profit. So what do Ken and Merlin want to do? Save the oak flat, break down the dams, give the native people back the land so they actually know how to tend it because we obviously don't know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah, trying to save the world. One song at a time, y'all. Hell yeah. We're performing these Oak Flat tracks tomorrow at Amati and at the Jose Maria Morelos Teatro. Oh my God, big theaters, y'all. International dreams to save the streams. Yeah, I like that slogan. They got water in the streams. Now it's in my veins. I feel like I'm Wolverine. <laughs> I'm playing that song tomorrow. Wolverine, let's go. Shout out to my dog Marshall Hugh and the Marshall Law Man in Seattle. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you go in. So we heard, uh, we heard about Charlie's creative processes on an individual level and uh, how it's turning into these collaborative, collaborative creations. But um, what's the stylistic differences between each of you? And we can go around and, and everybody can talk about it. Lots, you know. Lots, you know. Stylistic differences. Well, you we know, know Casey got the quadruple quintuple rhyme schemes. <laughs> Sextuple, sick tip a tuple. He'll rhyme 12 words in a row and then rhyme those 12 words with 12 more words. <laughs> <laughs> I know most everybody's from the PNW, you know, but I'm coming from New Orleans. Shout out to New Orleans, bringing that southern flavor, you know. Cajun a little bit of sauce, spice. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Making beats, trying to keep the beats fresh, new, super creative, and original, and unique, you know what I'm saying? You hear that gumbo track? Hey, who produced that? You know, yeah, yeah. Hey! <laughs> Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so when you guys aren't making music, which is pretty radical to start with, if you guys look into other things that are uh, of equally radical nature, what do you guys get into when you're not making your music? Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Elderberry. <laughs> it's an elderberry dream for me. I'm out there with the herbalists and the fairies in the forest harvesting berries, you know what I'm saying? Making medicines and meads, doing the things, saving the seeds. Yeah, harvesting with the bars. bees, getting the honeys, you know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about the honey bunnies, but we ain't talking about the money. We talking about the yummy for your tummy. We making good food in the kitchen. Me and my dogs whipping it up. We getting the shit from the ria, tortilla ria. Ya tu sabes que estamos haciendo. Me encanta para la salsa, bachata, barringa, cumbia. Y se me encanta enamorar. I like to fall in love, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we all like, I like to fall in love. I like to go forever. You know, I like love, life, man. We out here living it to the fullest, man. What was the question again? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do when you're not making music? Not making music. Oh. <laughs> Getting back to the ways, traveling. What he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that. Eating fruits, picking berries, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Never made a cashew cheesecake. Right, right. <laughs> Does filming videos count for not doing Does that right, count right, as music? Right, right, right. Does making beat no, no. <laughs> What about editing? <laughs> Networking? Oh, man. It's a lot. Just making art all the time. When I'm not making art, I'm thinking about making art. <laughs> yeah. For myself, uh, I study and practice alchemy, and I have a, a full <laughs> laboratory set up in my house. <laughs> hey. oh. oh, yeah, this man has a degree in organic chemistry, too. <laughs> no, no, not organic. I, oh, what was it again? I Sorry, switched from that, that yeah. Oh. Well, I originally <laughs> was studying alchemy. biochemistry, but then I ended up switching my whole uh, education goal uh, for be from being a biochemist <laughs> to, uh, to becoming a naturopathic doctor. And what? so uh, I started studying pre-med and natural oh, medicine, Check ended up with a 4.0, uh, graduating from uh, the National University of Natural Medicine, and uh, uh, I got a bachelor's of bachelor's science in integrative health studies, and uh, that'll help me get into the, the whole naturopathic doctor's uh, studies as soon as I decide that that's something I want to go forth into again. Uh, I got to figure out how to get my funding. I was uh, working through the VA. The VA was, uh, I'm a veteran myself, and so the VA was helping me uh, pay for everything. And they had made a promise that they were going to pay for my, my naturopathic doctorate degree. Uh, but because of some bullshit, basically, uh, I switched counselors and my Counts, previous counselor when I switched my degree goals didn't put down that I wanted to become a naturopathic doctor still studying just general uh, general chemistry 
And so I got fucked out of that. So now I gotta find ways to to pay for school. Maybe uh, the kid will pay for it. Yeah, 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 yeah you know, touring and shit, like not touring, but <laughs> like, like, you know, I got you, my God, like, for you, man. It's for the cause, man. Hey, Drip of the Iceberg is out, man. Come on, support the cause. I'm trying to get my man right, through right, that. Right, 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 right here, you know, every but sale, one percent yeah. to naturopathic doctors. But yeah, so you know, I, I, I study, uh, you know, natural medicines and um, how the the body reacts uh, to various. Um, compounds and uh, psychology and, and um, really work that into the medicines that I extract and uh, like I said I study alchemy and so there's a whole philosophy of practice that goes mm -hmm. into um, my extractions so yeah. yes. I, I love some alchemy, yeah. spending time in nature mm -hmm. I love spending time in nature catch me cold plunging as much as possible. Um, that's like my ultimate reset, uh, going to hot springs, like as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, ecstatic dance, I love dancing. Uh, skateboarding was like my main, one of my main passions. You know, I kind of like, as far as like career goes, I was like really going into the skateboarding route, but then through injuries, you know, like I kind of got knocked off the board, pun intended. Um, and I just got more, I got more focused on music and just like, you know, just like expressing myself, you know, in those ways, it's, it's all, it's all art and self-expression. And so, you know, anything that I can do for myself, for my health, for my body, for my wealth, to really get me in the position that I want to be, to, you know, to spread my message, to spread the love, spread my art is like what I'm taking my time doing. Yeah. I also love philosophy. I love spirituality. I'm always reading books from different you know, traditions and meditating and yeah, so that's that's the that's what mainly inspires me. Oh uh, yeah. I also make one of a kind wearable sculptures, you know out of gems. Dragon fine jewels Dragon and rings. different yeah. precious metals. That one makes the dope raps. I wear rap too, but not like that. Yeah, dope. Ooh. Yeah. And you can find my art at Nomadic Relics on yeah. Instagram. That's a good point. Not yet anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no. Nah, uh, also, nomadiclux.com. Yeah, get them while they're affordable, because a couple years from now, it's going to be up. 10 racks a ring, I'm telling you. <laughs> he ain't going to be using those non precious stones. I like using the precious and jewels. rubies. <laughs> Tanzanites and tourlamines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I do. I, I, shit, man. Music is pretty much tied into everything I do, even though I do do other things, but. I mean, I've always said that my top three things in life, and it's usually in this order too, that I need is like love, music, and cannabis, right? And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I work with cannabis all the time. I, uh, you know, I do a lot of vending with the wire wraps, just like, you know, like I was saying, and uh, different like crystal resale shit. I go down to like the World Gem Shows in Tucson and Quartzsite, pick up stuff, um, you know. But it's all music, man. I mean, I spent like a, a solid like, I don't know, like three months building a, uh, a custom sound room for a recording studio that we built that Re Torn was referencing earlier. Uh, that was a community project too. I had like three people's help on that because I couldn't have done that myself. I, I know construction, but not like to the point where I could do that whole project on my own. And uh, yeah, we had like seven layers of varying density insulation to block the sound from the outside so we could actually get true cuts without like sound bleeding in from anywhere. And the door shuts, it was all like sealed on the edges and everything. Um, made custom acoustic panels, you know what I mean? It's like, like I said, every, so I was doing like, that's kind of like still music related, you know, even though I was doing construction, like, it's all tied into this. This has been like, the, pretty much been my life, like, uh, for the past like two years, like manifesting all this and getting it together. Um, I really like going to music festivals though, that's probably my number one, mm. like, but once again, tied to music, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm into some freaky shit too, but, uh, you know, let's go. Hey, you can't just leave it there. That was, that was all right. That was a different interview. That was, that was the, the original, that was kind of the original question was like, like I'm music's, done. music's you pretty radical. You don't got to share, you don't got to share nothing, you don't want to share. What shit do you like to look into when you're not? I actually gave him that question because I wanted to hear you guys talk about conspiracy theories. Because uh, we're at an anarchist conference. And yeah. I think it might be fun to bring some of that shit into the... But yeah, just to answer the question you asked, like, I, yeah, I, I go through phases where I get super obsessed with, like, doing independent research on, like, a particular topic, or maybe it's 
uh, an idea I stumbled across and, you know, looking into that idea, but I, I have, you know, hundreds of things that, like, you know, I've done deep dives on from one time or another, you know, where I'll just, like, consume all sorts of information on this thing, and that sounds so bad, consuming information. Uh, Kenny would hate that. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I'll, I'll, I'll get, like, obsessive and just, like, research, like, crop circles. You ever heard the stuff. one about, like, humans like, controlling the weather? Oh, yeah. Geoengineering, I've done deep dives on that. I've done deep dives on all the craziest conspiracy theories, even the ones that, you you know, like, you think, oh, I, I you know, there's no point in looking into that. Like, I'll, I'll hear about something, like, concave earth theory, like, oh, i got to look into that, or, like, fucking, uh, the new one I've been getting into is Tartaria and, like, the old world and tech, free energy technology, but, like, I, I got into cryptocurrency for, like, real hard for a couple of years and fucking like obsessed with researching ayahuasca and DMT and stuff like that and uh, listen to all sorts of wild podcasts, just obsessive podcast listener like all day, every day pretty much when I'm not making music. So like, yeah, I, I'm always looking into wild shit and it's super fucking fun to be hanging out with a bunch of other people that are radical minded individuals, activists, you know, we're all activists in our own way, fighting for a better fucking future doing it in the coolest way possible by making dope hip-hop music and like, you know, I don't know, to me that's really fucking awesome and it's cool to be in a group with people that, you know, see the world a little differently and like, have that attitude, bring that spirit. No. Yeah. Now you gotta tell us what kind of freaky shit. <laughs> Come on, man, we'll move on to the next question. Yeah, yeah, that's a different no. interview. You can ask me that in a whole other interview later. This is a kid interview. All right, we'll yeah. get that interview. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, I'll tell you no, that. I'll do that interview. Just not to the group thing. Right now, I just want to you know. say I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> All the strippers I call should be here right Man, about on the spot. Yes, we got the strippers. <laughs> they called you, bro. Yeah, I heard you. Hola. Hola. Oh, it's buena, bu- buena, what, what, what? Yo. So, um, so you guys are a very eclectic group. You come from different places. You find yourself together, and. Um, but there's this uh, theme that rides through all of you that's brought you together, and I'm wondering if musicians want to join the kin, what qualities are you looking for in those people, and then how can they get involved? Oof. Well, uh... Just be true to yourself. Yeah, yeah, true MCs is number one, but honestly, like, it's the people we connect with that come into our realm, like, when we're doing these shows, like... There's honestly a guy we want to talk to, this dude, No C, that we met recently. is absolutely phenomenal. He's this crucial yeah, old school style, hits bars for days, and he's coming from the conscious standpoint with, with what he's talking about. You know, he's also somebody that's at our shows and has been popping up and coming around. That's how you get in. You come around, around, come to our shows, show us what you got, prove that, you know, you're in line, in alignment with what we're doing here, in addition to being talented and bringing something to the table for all of us, you know? And also just having the collective mindset and not being like super individualistic and making what we're doing about what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's 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 all about melding that, not like pushing it to one side or the other. So you know. Synergy and collaboration. Mm-hmm. And being true to oneself and true to your kin. I think that's what it's about. Yeah. yeah. For me it's all about being real. I feel like so much hip hop is so fake and like yeah. I, I don't fuck around with fake MCs. Like, it's got to be real. It's like number one rule. Real can be gangster, you know, if that's the real for you, you know. But yeah, that's it for me, honestly. Like, all y'all are just so fucking real with your music. Like, I just feel it. And, uh, yeah, that's my one rule. All right, but I got you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real rap. <laughs> it's real rap right there. <laughs> so do you guys have a... Uh, Last message for anyone and all of those who uh, are going to watch this. You're beautiful. You're powerful. You are infinite. Don't forget to love yourself. And you're free. <laughs> yeah. And, Come uh, check us out. Yeah, no, hey, like hey. Your water and save your seeds. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kin of Merlin. Merlin.com. Yeah, I just want to say follow your joy. Follow what brings you happy. Yep. And be nice to people. Yeah, ditto.
Be nice to yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right, bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, can we get like a group you, photo Hockey. together or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys are beautiful. Your mission is honorable. I'm going to support you, and I hope everyone who sees this decides to do so as well. Yeah. How can they get involved with your music, going to shows, providing financial support, so the kin can thrive and bring this good vibe onward and upward? Oh man, we got a whole flyer for that. Yeah, we got the whole QR code. Yeah, and everybody should plug your info too. Up. It's it's at the venue right now, so we'll put a graphic at the end of the video here, so you can get get all the QR codes if you want to help out our cause and actually help, uh, you know, sustain the abundance that we need to continue our missions and our duties here as uh, MCs and musicians, artists, um, and just uh, positive influencers for everybody. Uh, yeah. Does it can I have a page? Huh? Does it can I have a page? Yeah, I'll show okay. you when we get up here. Yeah. It's what nice. is it? Kinofmerlin.com, that's what I was saying. Kinofmerlin.com. That's right. You can, should we plug our individual shit as well? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My name's Yaya. You can find, my Instagram is OMG, it's Yaya. You can find all my music on all platforms at Yaya, Y-A-H, Y-A-H. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go by the name of Soul Disciple. I got a website, souldisciple.com. Also, Instagram, at Soul, like the sun, in Espanol. SOL dot disciple and uh, all my links are there. You know, I'm on all streaming platforms as well. Don't have a band camp yet, but I'm gonna get to it. So yeah. Yeah, best thing you can do to support the King of Merlin is listen to our music, share it around, send it to your friends, help us spread it around. Uh, if you feel like called to donate, that's amazing. We have tons of ways you can donate. Uh, I go by Rhyme Wave. You can find my music on all the streaming platforms and uh, my Instagram has a link tree with everything I've ever done from podcasts, interviews to uh, live sets to lots of different collaboration tracks. It's very cluttered, but it's all in one place, so that's pretty slick. And exclusive content on your Patreon, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Exclusive content on the Patreon. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, just it, if y'all are looking for me online, I'm Elemental with an A. That's E L A, mental, like English language arts. All right, so it's oh. not E L E, it's E L E. Elemental, and then M C on Instagram if you're looking for that E M C E E at the end. So yeah, I'm also on Hive, Hive Blockchain. Do some blogging there occasionally. I just got on Hive. That's the yeah. shit. Hey. Yeah, it's a great way to earn crypto and promote Hi. your craft. Shouts out. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, if you post it on Facebook very literally, and you're not making no money making your post. Jump over to uh, to Hive. Man, shouts out yeah. Hive. Go to Hive. 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 Some money. I think we're all pretty much do yeah. every day. Yeah. But yeah, so you can find me on Hive. Uh, it's at Alchemage, A L C H E M A G E. Uh, got a little bit of music on there, some spoken word, but it's mostly a bunch of articles on all kinds of different thoughts, uh, my philosophies, uh, various research I've done, a uh, bunch of research papers that I wrote in uh, college, um, and a bunch of various blogs where I get stoned as fuck <laughs> and talk about. Whatever the fuck I think about talking about, so uh, you can check me out there. Uh, you can check me out on YouTube. Uh, it's Odd Goggy O D D D, not oh my god, O D D G O G G I. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Instagram, I'm still you know kind of building my online presence there. It's uh, Pope Dot Squirrel. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember the actual spelling of that. Right. If, if it's the real squirrel or my <laughs> my name, which, I think it's your name. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah. So then it'd be Pope dot S K W Y R L. Um, and yeah. yeah. And uh, I also wanted to mention, I'm pretty sure all of us are all on all the major streaming platforms. Like I know I got my music on Spotify, Bandcamp, and Apple Music and stuff, but. Uh, we also have one track actually releases a single before all these big releases because we're about to do a ton of them and just just throw music everywhere at you guys. Uh, we do have one single with a music video. It's called Elevate, same way my name's spelled, E-L-A. That one's on YouTube and also available on our website. You can see the music video on our website along with the, the single itself and all the major tra streaming platforms under Kingdom Merlin. So uh, I think that's about all I got for the information for everything. This is a great interview, guys. Well, yeah. So, uh, no? I'm torn. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Perdón, no, está bien, porque estamos en México, entonces... Soy Torin, Torin Frost. In English, Torin Frost. Uh, and you can just look up that um, name, T-R-I-N, and find me everywhere, y'all. Rocking with the kid of Merlin, maybe swerving through our own, yeah, yeah, you never know. One more thing. Thank you, Haji. 
Yeah, shout out Hodge. And the Liberty luck. Uncensored newspaper yeah. coming out of Colorado. Ooh-wee. This right here. Real news for the people. Yeah, real you news. You're gonna see people. Ken and Merlin in this for at least the next 15 months with our ads because we already we want to support back as well. And we all about that synergy, like yes. you said. But and yeah. shout out Warriors of the Rainbow Lodge. If y'all really yeah. trying to live alternative lifestyles away mm-hmm. from the system, away from the government, you know, tap in with Haji for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout, shout out, out to yeah. Kenny and Ken, Kenny's 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 Kitchen. Kenny's Kitchen. 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 Facts. Facts. Inspiring us <laughs> how to live more healthy, more alive, more divine. Oof, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Much love, y'all. Yeah. All right. Yo, hey, there you shit. go. What up? Can't have Important question for all of you. What do you say to somebody who wants to hear your symbol all of it, but they are Mexico and they can't get on the internet? Oh. We, this guy's got us. I got it on. Hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like, uh. <laughs>